one calorie in for me is going to be completely different for you. And we're all using a outdated nutrition facts for all these products. And in the future, what we see is a microbiome facts that looks at your entire microbiome profile from your skin to your mouth, to your genitals, to your gut and so forth. And every single product that you interact with in the future is going to be personalized for you based on your microbiome signature. Human OS. Learn. Master. Achieve. We tend to think of ourselves as completely distinct organisms, separate from others. But all animals and plants form vital symbiotic relationships with microorganisms, and we are no exception. That includes the organisms on us and within us. One example is the gut microbiome, or the collection of bacteria and other microbes living inside the gastrointestinal tract. The number of microorganisms inhabiting the gut has been estimated to be 10 times greater than our own cell number that makes up our body. We are, in a sense, a giant superorganism. It is only in the last decade or so that we have come to fully appreciate the influence and the potential of the gut microbiome in human health. We now know that the gut microbes play a critical role in many aspects of their host's physiology, including the immune system and metabolism and even brain function and health. The changes in microbial communities in the gut may contribute to an astounding array of human disease. Individuals who follow this area of research, like me, have become interested in finding ways to understand and optimize our own gut microbiome. And tools have emerged that purport to help us enhance the composition and function of our own gut microbes. For instance, commercial probiotics, or live microbial cultures meant to colonize the gut with good bugs, have exploded in popularity. It is now estimated to command a worldwide market of $37 billion U.S. dollars. In parallel, companies have emerged that offer personalized analysis of the microbial contents of fecal samples, which is a way to understand the composition of your gut microbiome. But the human microbiome remains a bit of an enigma. For instance, by what criteria can we conclusively identify what is a healthy versus an unhealthy gut microbiome? Furthermore, even if we can make such determinants, can we really do anything about it? Today on Humanos Radio, I speak with Richard Lin. Richard became more deeply invested in his health when he developed a problem that failed to respond to conventional medical interventions. He eventually realized that a disruption in the gut microbiota was the likely cause of his illness. This inspired him to start the company Thrive Inside. Thrive helps individuals test and learn about their own microbiota by providing at-home microbiome test kits. But here's what sets Thrive apart. They don't just give you information, they also endeavor to provide solutions. Thrive offers personalized probiotics to their customers, which are formulated based on their individual microbiome composition and their individual health goals. So let's delve into this subject more deeply with a conversation with the man himself. Richard, welcome to Human OS Radio. Thanks for having me on the show. What inspired you to start the company? So the company is called Thrive Inside, and we're the world's first gut health company that incorporates both microbiome DNA testing as well as personalized probiotics. And so our product provides a testing kit that you can order directly from our website. You do it at the convenience of your home. We look at the bacteria in your stool, so it's a little piece off your toilet paper. In about two weeks, you get a report back, and in that report, you see all the different bacteria in your body, how they relate to your health, and then what foods you should eat to improve the ratios of good and bad bacteria in the body. We also send a personalized probiotic supplement that we worked with multiple different manufacturers and research companies around the world to catalog a large amount of strains in order to personalize probiotics for each person. And started this company because about two years ago, I took antibiotics, ended up getting really sick from them and hospitalized. And I went to multiple different opinions asking, why do I feel so sick? You know, why was I going to the bathroom so much? How come I couldn't sleep and get a cold sweat and so on? And pretty much every doctor told me, hey, you're too young and you look healthy. There's probably nothing wrong with you and you're just a hypochondriac. You're depressed. So here's some antidepressants. And it was after that interaction that I started saying, okay, I need to take control of this situation. I need to learn a little bit more and not just go off of my doctors. And so I started researching and came across this very serious gut infection that's caused by antibiotics. Went back to my fourth opinion, asked my doctor to prescribe a PCR DNA test for C. diff, which is a very serious gut bacteria. 
and came back positive, got treated for that, and then I felt much better. So it's in that interaction that I realized this is a pretty common thing that happens to a multitude of people. And so in this journey, I was in different forums, different closed Facebook groups where different people were dealing with different types of chronic illness from, say, Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis to digestive issues like IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis to weight issues, diabetes, prediabetes, being overweight, and so on. And they were all looking toward how the bacteria in our bodies actually affect their disease state. And there really wasn't a product out there that could help them understand all the scientific jargon and technical literature. And so I wanted to build a product that could make that easy and accessible for everyday people. So that's how Thrive came about. It looks like you're doing a very comprehensive approach. So there's an education, there's learning about yourself, and then there's a solution. Talk to us a little bit about that process. How many different formulations of probiotics do you have? And then how many different variables are you looking at in order to make that determination of what might be a better choice for someone A versus somebody B? Sure. So just a high level, our probiotic personalization is based off of two things. The first one being a questionnaire. So it's actually 80% based on a questionnaire. And the first kind of step is we ask you about your health goals. What kind of symptoms do you have? And we dive deeper into different areas of your health. And that helps us catalog the right amount of strains for you. And the second part is a testing kit. And so the testing kit is about 20% of the algorithm, if you will. And if we find any overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria, we'll incorporate different strains and different prebiotics and vitamins and minerals in order to combat that. And so that's how our decision tree works. Right now, we have about 30 plus different strains that we can use that personalizes the experience for each individual. How quickly can you see the effects of a probiotic take hold within a secondary sample of feces from that same individual? When we look at the microbiome profile after a person's been on our program, on our probiotics and our food recommendations, we do see the strains attached to about 30 to 40% of people. The other 60% that have more transient nature with the probiotics, they still feel the benefit. So the probiotics still pass through the digestive tract. They still produce the enzymes, the vitamins, the chemicals, and so on and so forth in the body that help improve health, but they don't necessarily stay in the gut. We have seen the ones that do stay in the gut see a longer lasting effect even after they stop taking the probiotics. We're still trying to figure out exactly why that is. Everyone's body is pretty unique and the biology is different. One of our theories is that some of these probiotic strains that we have are similar to different strains that the successful cohort may have had as they were growing up. So be that in the first three years of life when the microbiome is being shaped, that there was different kind of probiotics in their gut that the body recognizes as not foreign and as part of the immune system. And so we think the theory of why some people actually have probiotics that stick within the gut versus some that just have more of a transient nature. In an ideal scenario, for somebody who's really invested in the subject and just wants to fully capitalize on what you guys do, how frequently would you actually do a fecal test? Our protocol is to test every quarter. The reason why we see that is because based on our customer data, every three months, it seems to be the most changes that happen, especially for people that don't necessarily do any crazy life events, like take an antibiotic or travel halfway across the world or try a new diet and so on. So the majority of our customers, we encourage to test every quarter to track the progress of how your microbiome is going and be able to find trends, whether trends to potentially have symptoms or trends that show that you're approaching better health. That's what we would encourage. We do have customers that test every month, a little bit crazier ones that like to get as much data as possible. And we also have customers that try every six months, but you know, our recommendation is every quarter. That's reflected in a lot of health initiatives. So you've got people that are just looking to optimize and then you've got the, what I call unsatisfied six. They're really trying to solve a specific issue. For those optimizers, is there a wellness approach? Is there anything that you've identified in the non-sick that has been an area of opportunity to feel even better or to perform better? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple. The first one is energy levels. People are not necessarily sick, but they lack energy. They're more fatigued. We've seen with certain bacteria in the body when they increase certain foods that increase those good bacteria that they do optimize their energy levels. Now, one could argue, is it placebo or is it actually the change in the microbiome? And we do track the biome and that bacteria actually increasing, but we're still trying to discover on more of those areas. People with digestion and those issues, necessarily sick people, but people that want to optimize their nutrition, be able to take Taken more vitamins, utilize their proteins and fats and carbs better. There's certain bacteria in studies that have shown to help with that as well. So more like performance recovery. One is skin. I would venture to say that everyone that's healthy wants to have clear skin. And we've seen a lot of those as well with certain bacteria increasing with the right foods. And then that results in improved skin from our customers as well. 
It's also interesting the fact that you're using machine learning, which has utility in a lot of different fields. Describe what machine learning is and then how you guys use it to create a better product. The way we're using machine learning is there's two phases. So the first phase, we look at all the research articles that's available right now, and we pull in all the rich metadata. So processing, which looks through all the text of the scientific journals, we pull out the information because these programs aren't necessarily perfect. Sometimes the metadata that's taken out is not accurate. And so what machine learning does is it keeps finding the right path to get the right answer. And over time, the machine learns based on this bacteria that we pulled out from the study, here's all the health benefits and here's the error and the success of this actually being the right answer. So that's the first phase that we pull in all the scientific literature. We use natural language processing to summarize and we use machine learning to ensure that we continue to get the right text and the right information, the right output for our reports. The second part of our machine learning is using the customer sample data. So customers that actually buy all their health information, what kind of diets they eat, how they feel, symptoms, and so on and so forth. We incorporate that with the microbiome data and we start mapping. And so we start correlating if a person has irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea, how can the machine map out those specific specific symptoms to specific microbes in the body. And based on predicting, you can get a high level of accuracy of saying, hey, someone with diarrhea may specifically have this type of clostridium type of bacteria. And that's the second phase of how we're using machine learning. Now that we're getting more and more data about ourselves, especially our health, it's really interesting seeing the different technologies and tools that we're using to be able to make more insights out of it. And so the good thing is we have a lot of data, but mining it and then making sense of it is the next hurdle. What are some other things that you're looking to do with the product? There, are, of course, are other ways to intervene within the gut, not just probiotics, polyphenols, things like that. Do you intend to capitalize on that or do you just want to stay really focused on helping people identify the right probiotic strain for whoever they are and their goals? What we see in the next three to five years is a complete shift of how we view our health. And I'll give you more specific examples. When you think about all the products that we interact with, whether it's the food that we eat, the supplements that we take, the medications we take, the lotions, the shampoos, the toothpaste that we put on our bodies, food we feed our kids, formulas and so on, even our pet food. One calorie in for me is going to be completely different for you. And we're all using an outdated nutrition facts for all these products. And in the future, what we see is a microbiome fact that looks at your entire microbiome profile from your skin to your mouth to your genitals to your gut and so forth. And every single product that you interact with in the future is going to be personalized for you based on your microbiome signature. We're still going to be focused on the probiotic supplementation, but that helps us get to a point of the testing portion is really huge and gathering the data from the entire family from the husband, the wife, the kids and the pets and then being that data platform that is able to tell each customer what products they should interact with and so forth. So that's where we think the future is going to be at. And part of that process is gathering all that data through testing and being able to provide that to our customer base in the future. Right now, there's been a rapid appreciation of the importance of the microbiome over the last just 15 years. And increasingly, there are now products out there that do an assessment and then recommend a product. And how are you guys different from them? How do you distinguish from the others that are out there that are doing what you're doing? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we think about our space, especially the fusion between the microbiome test, food recommendations, and a personalized probiotic, from my knowledge, we don't really know of any company doing the same thing. The ones that are trying to come in the space don't have a product to market yet. But we would like to think there's two camps. There's probiotic only companies and then the one size fits all, the ones you find in Whole Foods and so on and so forth. And then you have the microbiome testing only companies. And kind of the biggest difference between our tests and others is the first one is our testing kit. When we were developing and doing the research and development on that, we realized that every other kit on the market were either using a dry swab or they're using antimicrobials in the liquid buffer to preserve the stool. And the reason why they use antibiotics in their buffer is because when you ship off a sample and it's in the mail, it's hot, the bacteria within that tube could actually overgrow and you can actually have an overgrowth of pathogens within the sample. So when you sequence, it's not even the same sample anymore. It's not representative of what was shipped. Exactly. But the problem with that method is that when you lyse the cells, when you break down the cell walls and the DNA falls out of the bacteria, when you try to extract and pipette it out of the tube and then you put it into the sequencing machines, it causes a lot of noise in the sequencing process. And so we developed our own proprietary liquid buffer that preserves the bacteria, doesn't kill them, and it provides 28% more depth in terms of picking up species and having more accuracy. So our kit itself is already superior than every other testing company out there. The second part is like I mentioned the machine learning and the NLP that we do with the research articles. If you use any other 
microbiome testing service, they'll tell you what bacteria is in your body, which is pretty much written in Latin, and they'll tell you what percentages. So they'll say, hey, you have bifidobacterium longum at 12%. And as a consumer, you're wondering, okay, what does that even mean? And so you have to copy and paste that into Google. You have to go on PubMed. You get maybe 5,000, 10,000 articles on that one bacteria, and you're supposed to read through all the articles to figure out why that bacteria matters. We're the first company that actually has the largest microbiome database with really rich metadata on each bacteria. So what are the health benefits? Did they create biofilms? What kind of foods did they digest? So on and so forth. And we mapped that to a thousand food ingredients. So we know exactly which food, based on current research, increase XYZ bacteria. And we go even a step further with our testing where we have something called a research confidence algorithm. And based on if the studies were in vivo, whether they're in vitro, whether they're human clinical studies, how long of a duration were those studies, how large was the sample size and so forth, we create each article based on strong, medium, mixed, or emerging research. And so every recommendation that we give to the customer is completely graded for them to see. And that transparency allows them to know how far is the science really on each of these recommendations. And we're the first company that actually exposes these methods to the consumer. So you know exactly if eating a broccoli and it's a strong recommendation, then I know I'm in a good place and I'm going to follow through with that. And so that's one part of the reporting that really makes it competitive and differentiated compared to everybody else. This is a really tough field. It's also very important. And I think you're doing it right, given what technology can do today. I don't know the space well enough to know there's other opportunities that you're missing, but I'm impressed with how thorough the approach is to get at personalization in a way that's going to be different than just the luck of getting something off the shelves. If you were to put together, let's say, a commercial probiotic that you could buy at Good Earth or Whole Foods or something, or go through the personalization approach, do you think that for a lot of people that are not necessarily sick, do you think that there's really a difference that we can eke out through your process? If we were to approach retail and have a product that fits all for people that are healthy, and generally there's areas where healthy people want to actually increase their health versus more serious issues. So for instance, improving your skin, improving your immunity during wintertime. Constipation is huge, even though you'd be surprised how many healthy people are constipated. And so there's these different areas where we believe that we have strains in our catalog and we're adding more as time goes on that could potentially be productized in a way that can just be offered off the shelf versus the current trend of probiotics seems to be a little bit less scientific where they throw in as much CFUs. And if your audience isn't familiar with CFUs, it's colony forming units. So the total amount of bacteria per serving or per capsule. So for them, it's more marketing. Let's have very, very high CFUs because when the number is bigger, people just think it's better. And let's many strains as we can. So let's throw like 50 different strains in there, not knowing how they all interact with each other and if they actually even help. And so they're taking a huge shotgun approach where we think for us, as we break down the different cohorts, if we're going to productize it for the mainstream, that would probably be the approach that we do. I don't know if we would ever sell our testing kit at a Whole Foods. Yeah, I know 23andMe, I think sells kits at Target. So maybe Target would be a better avenue. Have you noticed an area that distinguishes itself as the biggest impact from your probiotics? So digestion is huge, and specifically with ulcerative colitis, with Crohn's, with irritable bowel syndrome, some acid reflux, constipation, and so on, are large in that area. The second one is autoimmunity. Hmm. With eczema, Hashimoto's, and certain types of autoimmune diseases have seen less frequent flare-ups, and their flare-ups are vastly reduced in terms of pain and so on. And so those two areas are pretty big. Mood is something that we're seeing upcoming. Obviously, that's a little bit more subjective and a little bit harder to track when you talk about about digestive issues, I can actually see how many times I'm going to the bathroom. I can see if my stool is shaped. With autoimmunity, with eczema, I can see the patch of that rash. Is it, is it getting worse or is it getting better? Mood is a little bit harder to gauge. We've seen the mood cohort as well as sleep uh, pretty much related to each other. And so when we track sleep, people do sleep, deeper sleep, fall asleep easier, stay asleep longer based on some of the reported feedback. And so that's another area that we're pretty excited about. As a sleep scientist, I can tell you that there's a lot more research looking at the effects of sleep on next day eating behaviors, but there's much fewer studies looking at the effects of food on sleep itself, but there are a few. And one of them was done by Marie-Pierre Saint-Ange, who showed that fiber intake across the day was a determinant of increases in slow wave sleep and sleep continuity, which is less arousals over the course of the night. And so that would resonate with what your findings are with the probiotics and sleep. Interesting. Do you plan on expanding outside of the gut microbiome? We're pretty focused on the gut microbiome right now, but we do see ourselves and we have plans in our roadmap to branch out in a multitude of ways. So just the gut microbiome, like when you talk about the microbiome, it's not just bacteria and there's yeast, there's viruses. And so that's an area that we need to conquer as well, just in the gut. We do want to expand to the skin, to genital health and so forth. So that's just human health, but we also are looking into children health as well. 
mm-hmm. a little bit different on the first three years of life and how the microbiome is rapidly shifting is a complete different use case than say an adult gut microbiome. And then finally, veterinary. So with pets, different dogs, cats, it's interesting. You know, people and probably care about their pets sometimes more than their kids, funny enough. Yeah. I think there's actually a large opportunity there to improve veterinary health through personalization of food and probiotics and things like that. We're starting to see the trend of how people are taking care of their pets, straying away from generic dog food, since yeah. they've been seeing a lot of different types of symptoms coming up with their dogs and going to more whole food sources for the pets. So we think there's a lot of opportunity there as well. Do you recommend any other wellness advice in combination with your probiotic, whether it's certain types of foods to eat or other sources of probiotics through fermented foods? Yeah. So obviously we personalize the food recommendations. We have all types of foods from vegetables to fruits, meats, and so on. We don't have this yet, but we're building out a supplement recommendation as well. So all the research based on what supplements increase what bacteria, that's something that we want to get involved in. Whether or not we actually sell those vitamins is another story. We may potentially get more into the vitamin business, just depending on the market data. But it wouldn't be far-fetched to see us referring customers to different vitamin companies based on their microbiome results. But in terms of the microbiome, we definitely see it as one part of the toolkit of your health. We still have human genes. We still have different blood markers and hormones and so on and so forth that interact all with each other. And we try to be as holistic and comprehensive as possible. If there's something that we can't find in the biome that's relating to a person's symptoms, we'll try to partner with other companies. One company we love working with is Everly Well. They do at-home diagnostics for all kinds of labs that you would find normally at your doctor's office. So tracking, say, CBC, CRP, different hormones, testosterone, thyroid, and so on. And we do see ourselves branching out into human genetics, into basic lab work and incorporating all that data back with the microbiome data to give you a more comprehensive picture. Whether we build those tests or we work with other partners is still up in the air, but we think about our product eventually getting to that point. Is there anything that I'm forgetting asking that's critical to what you guys are doing now? Maybe the current stage of where we're at. As your audience may know, we're an early stage startup, grown quite rapidly, built a very strong team of scientific advisors, professors from MIT to Harvard, Stanford, UC Davis, all geared in the microbiome, nutrition, with probiotics, with disease interaction in the microbiome and so forth. And so that was one of our key things to just build a very strong scientific advisory board, bring on strong scientists to validate all the information I'm providing. But it's really interesting because our business is multidisciplinary, if you think about it. There's the marketing brand side. How do you make something super technical and sciencey sexy? Yeah. At the end of the day, if you want to advance this area, it has to be sexy. People will need to want to do it, especially the mass consumer. And the more people that we get, the more data we get, the better it is. And so there's the marketing branding side, but then there's also the computer science and programming side in order to build this product. And so that's another discipline. And then you have the life sciences. How do you validate the data that you're giving customers is accurate and is helpful and useful? That's been a quite a journey to build together the team, build a foundation in order to get this product to market and execute on it. But I'm super excited about that and glad to be able to share this with your audience. By the way, can people engage with your services without doing that fecal test? Absolutely. So we have three different price plans. We have just the probiotic personalization. If you just want to do the questionnaire and get a semi-personalized experience, we can do that. We also have a the testing kit. If you just want to buy the testing kit, we realize a lot of quantified self people don't necessarily want to take probiotics. They just want to get the data and learn about themselves. There's also that option. And then we have a gut health bundle that incorporates both the testing kit and the probiotics as one offering that provides both the prebiotic recommendations from the test, as well as the personalization of the probiotic. We're working in conjunction for improving your gut health. We always encourage customers to do the program, but some people have different tastes. I've experienced your product. I think it's superior and I look forward to continuing to benefit from it in its own version and as it advances over time. So thank you. Thank you for having me and for your audience. If they want to find us, they can go to www.thriveinside.com. That's T-H-R-Y-V-E inside.com. All our social, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, at Thrive Inside. So thank you so much. Thanks for listening and come visit us soon at humanos.me.